Can I first say thank you uh, to Safina and Novel London for this great opportunity and personally to my friend Tori for driving with me all the way from the West Country here today and uh, for my friend Lisa coming all the way from Hackney. Yeah. <laughs> So I had the good fortune to work for the first all-female radio station, and from that experience came the germinal seed for this novel. My female character is sort of having a midlife crisis at the age of 30, if that's possible. And uh, her father, who's a frustrated scientist, would have her believe in all kinds of newfangled possibilities made possible by his readings of the scientific journal, etc., etc. She, however, has to figure out whether she is going to listen to her father and uh, believe in his viewpoints of the world or whether she's going to forge her own brave understanding of the world. Without further ado, Radio Honey, Chapter One to the sound of Ordinary World by Duran Duran. There's no point working in a radio station unless you love music, real music. And yeah, sure, you'll have to play the station shit, but every now and then, you'll be able to sneak one in that you genuinely like. Something that makes you feel good to be alive. Pure musical gold. A little Billie Holiday or Marvin Gaye, an old delight hit, or maybe even my old fave, the Shaft theme tune. I've been cautioned for less. Then there's what you can do with the playlist. You can move the tunes around to suit your own show-specific running order, depending on the way you're feeling that day, to accommodate an interview which ran long, insert a breaking news item, or just because you had to hightail it to the little girl's room and back, in which case an extra long song is called for. It could be a start it light and build up kind of day, or a hit them with a big tune in the intro and keep building till you hit the end of your coffee rush affair. Then again, it could be the kind of day where you're trying to forget a certain someone, in which case, You'll play every love em and leave em song in the I've Been Dumped catalogue, of which there are many, and today is one of those days. <laughs> His name is Jack, or Bastard, although it could be Steve, John, Bob, or Adam. There have been so many that never got past the first shag followed by my cringing attempts to keep what modicum of original interest they had in me alive, only to see them retreat further at a giddy pace. Is the word desperate now so clearly emblazoned on my forehead that no male in their right mind would engage me for more than an evening's friendly without a matrimonial lawyer and a good prenup? And when you bump into these passing lovers months or years down the line. They're invariably with Jessica, Annabel, Lisa, or Sarah, and she is so much more beautiful than your own reflection looking back at you in the mirror. Thirties, five foot six, dyed blonde hair, great tits, great ass. Suddenly you understand why Steve, John, Bob, Adam, et al. dumped you. Or she is so plain, plain Jane, you wonder how Steve, John, Bob, or Adam dumped you and plumped for her. In your mind, you imagine sexual acts she must perform with one hand tied behind her back. Gymnastic-like maneuvers that make her indispensable. In reality, it's probably something a lot simpler. Something like good old-fashioned chemistry. I mean, they say there's someone out there for everyone. But is that statistically and evolutionarily possible? I can hear my father spouting his statistical non-entities as I ponder this. He is very fond of a social statistic. The latest scientific data or a cringingly data-driven chart analysis. But isn't it just as reasonable to assume that there is no logic, no rhyme or reason, and we all simply clamor about just trying to get the best we can? like a game of musical chairs where the music stops and you, having missed all the other chairs, simply jump 
for the last available place to rest your rump. Perhaps now, when you see Steve, John, Bob or Adam with this other woman, you can rationalize that it wasn't that you weren't pretty enough or cool enough, but that he simply decided to sit down at a pause in the music. That somehow, the music had been playing so loudly when you two were together with the swelling of violins and heartstrings that there wasn't a moment to sit down and take stock. Propelled along by the beauty of the dance, you both twirled yourselves out of the ring. <laughs> Face it, you weren't the one for any of them. And you wonder if you will be the one for anyone, and if not, whether that will be okay. Thank you.